Big rivers dominate the world's continental surface, yet we are still learning about how they operate and whether they are explicably different not only from one another, but also from smaller rivers. I'm Phil Ashworth, Professor of Physical Geography at the University of Brighton. I'm interested in trying to understand how the biggest rivers in the world operate and how they sculpt our fragile Earth's surface. I'm interested in applied research, such as how rivers respond to environmental change, how they erode, how they silt up, and in particular I'm interested in how hydrocarbons are trapped within ancient sediments deposited by rivers. Despite the fact that the world's ten largest rivers drain almost one-fifth of the global continental land area and deliver about one-third of the terrestrial sediments supplied to oceans, we know relatively little about how such large rivers function. This is both surprising and problematic, given that they impact directly on a wide range of environmental, social and economic issues, such as major flooding, bank erosion, infrastructure collapse, wetland creation, and ultimately create deposits that host some of the world's most lucrative mineral and fossil fuel reserves. Consequently, there's an urgent need to develop an improved quantitative understanding of the interactions between the processes operating in big rivers and the channel morphology and deposits they produce. The 4,000 kilometre long Rio Paraná has a drainage basin that covers the surface of four countries in South America. Most of our work has focused on a 600 kilometre reach from the towns of Itati to Santa Fe. There are three features that characterise the Paraná channel pattern. Firstly, the dominance of a well-defined deep but sinuous main channel mean the Paraná is essentially a meandering river trapped within a braid plain comprised of multiple channels. Secondly, the Paraná has surprisingly few exposed sandbars. Most islands are vegetated and stable. Despite being a big and powerful river, the Paraná actually takes decades to make substantial planform changes. Thirdly, the Paraná floodplain is dominated by extensive wetland features that are eroded, filled or enlarged in each flood event. These water bodies are important carbon sinks and large portions of the thick organic matter on their beds can be completely excavated during large floods. It's, it's the thickness of the sets that is going to really change with the size of the river. Yeah. So big rivers, big sets. I'm Halusi Mustafa from London. I'm studying Geography BSc at the University of Brighton. I was fortunate enough to be part of a £1 million project funded by the Natural Environment Research Council and a leading US oil company who worked on the estuarine zone of the Columbia River. In June, I was lucky enough to work alongside Phil and his team to map and drill sediments along the Columbia River estuary. The three weeks of summer work was an eye-opening experience for me as a student. I have been very fortunate to be trained in the use of state-of-the-art equipment, such as mapping instrumentation and seismic equipment, as well as having unprecedented access to world-leading experts in sedimentology from the US, Canada and UK. We use sophisticated, high-resolution equipment to map the Paraná riverbed morphology and its evolution through time. We measure the flow structure and image the sedimentary structures preserved below the bed surface. One particularly successful technique employed on the Paraná is called ground penetrating radar, which in the well sorted sandy sediments that typify large rivers produce crystal clear images of the makeup of kilometre long river islands. Our work on one of the world's largest rivers, the Rio Paraná, suggests big rivers have unique characteristics and possibly a distinctive sedimentology. Now that we understand the processes and dynamics of the world's largest rivers, the challenge is to start to look at the world's most complex environments, where rivers meet tides.